They used to make trucks at this factory in St. Thomas, big, sturdy rigs. But now only weeds fill the lot where 1,400 workers once parked. It seems a fitting symbol of a disturbing trend in Canada, manufacturers finding greener pastures elsewhere. Sterling trucks once rolled off the line here. All that ended in 2009 when Daimler, the parent company, canceled the Sterling brand. Total shock. I'm there five years. These other guys, there are 15 years. Dwight Hoffman was one of the workers that lost their job. Um, not very fair. You know, there's a lot of people lost their jobs. A lot of people that relied on it, their family relied on it. The whole city of St. Thomas relied on it. You know what, it went from, you know, the guys at the variety store to the restaurants to everything. Everybody got affected. And it wasn't just the Sterling plant that closed in St. Thomas. There's no mistaking the Ford Oval, even if the name is gone, just like the 1,100 workers who once made cars here. As the auto industry becomes increasingly globalized, Canada finds itself at a crossroads, with manufacturers looking south to more hospitable locales. Hoffman is actually one of the lucky ones. He retrained for a year, scraping by. He has a new job now, HVAC technician, heating and air conditioning, but at a much lower salary. Family adjustments were made, his wife doubling her home daycare business, and frank and worrisome discussions with his kids about their future. We talk to our kids that are, are older and out in the work field or trying to um, educate yourself for something more than just going into a factory because there's no guarantees, none. Daimler told Hoffman and his co-workers that because the Sterling brand was ending, there was no more work that the end of the line meant the end of the job. But Hoffman knew better. Everyone knew better. And then, then when it all was said and done, you knew they're going to Mexico and went from there. And when they go to Mexico, they likely go here, Monterey, just an hour and a half from Houston by air. It's Mexico's third largest metropolitan region with four million people. It's the capital of the state of Nuevo Leon, a region that has become a manufacturing magnet. It's where Dwight Hoffman might find his job. An hour west of Monterey is a giant Daimler truck plant, opened the same year the plant in St. Thomas was closed. New trucks roll out of here, three at a time, made by a Mexican shop floor worker who may work for as little as 20% of what a Canadian made doing the same job. 1,400 of them, the same amount that worked in St. Thomas. And just down the road from that Freightliner plant, a new Chrysler facility. And then, even more telling, a massive new Kia plant just north of Monterey, the biggest construction project in a state that is already booming. When Kia Motors was scouting the globe for the site of its newest production facility, it chose this place, just 29 kilometers from Monterey. This billion dollar facility is part of a growing trend among manufacturers. It used to be that Mexico was a destination for lower cost production, second rate production. Now it's the first choice destination for top of the line work. Hours. Diba Iluna runs the Magna powertrain plant in Ramos, set in the hills about 40 minutes west of Monterey. He's witnessed the evolution of the Mexican worker firsthand. At the beginning, we were just doing assembly. Now we do assembly and machining of components. Uh, we do some very complex components here that seven years ago we thought we would never relocalize in, in, in Mexico. Mexican auto production has doubled in the past 10 years, and that production has meant jobs. From 495,000 in 2003 to 668,000 in 2013, that is a 35% increase. For Canadian parts giant Magna, the allure of Mexico is obvious. It follows its customers, the big manufacturers. Magna has 30 assembly facilities in Mexico and employs 24,000 people and counting. Eluna says while labor costs are definitely part of the draw, there's something else going on. So what we have seen is on average in productivity, we gain between six and 8% per year. 
So it's a huge improvement that we can do every year. And due to the attitude of the people, the flexibility of the people, they accept to try new things and we can do these trials and then gain productivity. Productivity that is measured in seconds, even if it's just a training drill for new workers. Higher productivity or efficiency means higher profit. So these cheaper workers are actually performing better. Um, I would say their capabilities are evolving. This piece is one of the more unique ones that we have in the museum. because Make transformers for a hundred years like Bill Hammond's family has been doing, Missouri. and you collect a few things along the way. The museum at Hammond Power in Guelph, Ontario is a testament to the company's longevity. Its roots are deep in Canada and it's an important employer, making large, complicated transformers for industry. Good, high-paying, skilled jobs in a business that's constantly innovating. Guadalupe, a suburb of Monterey, where you will also find the Hammond name. They have two plants in Mexico and a third joint venture opening soon. The Mexican factories make smaller transformers. It's more of an assembly line operation. But Bill Hammond says that doesn't mean Mexican workers are less capable than their Canadian counterparts, and the world is figuring that out. Well, there was a time when Mexico had a reputation of building shoddy product. And um, um, we're finding now that global manufacturers are more than willing to accept uh, products coming out of Mexico because the quality levels are as good as they are out of the United States or Canada. The country can thank workers like Crisanto San Martin for improving that reputation. He came to Hammond eight years ago with no experience. Yeah, they gave me good training. When I got here, I didn't know anything. I didn't even know what an electrical transformer was. I didn't know any of that, and they told me, don't worry, don't be afraid, you will contribute, you will do this. So how much does San Martin make compared to his Canadian company, Brothers and Sisters? Basically, in Mexico, we pay one-tenth of what we do in our Canadian plants, and that's a significant savings. So there are significant advantages for manufacturers to build products in Mexico. And uh, again, with the increasing pressure because of globalization in sourcing, uh, then uh, so many manufacturers have no choice but to really look at Mexico if they're going to reduce our manufacturing costs. Well, the pay is not much. We don't complete our bills, so my wife has to work too. The jobs here are low wage, but in comparison to other factories, Hammond pays better. Mexican officials bristle at the notion the country is little more than a pool of cheap workers. We don't have a cheap labor. Selena Villarreal is the economic development officer for the state. We met at a large research and development park just outside Monterey, a place she says is proof the country is creating skilled technical jobs to meet the demand of a manufacturing boom. Mexico is not a cheap labor anymore. It's, we're giving added value to the processes. So that's why Nuevo León is concentrating efforts in R&D activities to give more added value to the processes. R&D support might be tough to measure for companies like Kia. There's no doubt lower wages will make it cheaper to assemble their cars here, but there's something else Mexico has going for it after they're built. Kia will be able to export them to more places around the world for less, too. Mexico has trade agreements with 44 countries, saving an automaker up to 10% per vehicle if built and shipped from here. Now, we also export to Europe, to Asia, and there also those trade agreements help us a lot. Kia isn't just building an assembly plant here, this is a game changer, a massive investment that implies a very long commitment. And they're not alone. Recent headlines keep a running tally of manufacturers racing, not walking, to get to Mexico. Seven billion dollars of investment announced last year alone, including those choosing to invest here instead of in Canada. And Bill Hammond says we should all be worried. Unfortunately, I can see where manufacturing as we know it in this country uh, will not be around. Often described as a race to the bottom on wages, Mexico may instead represent a triple threat. 
workers willing to work not just harder, but yes, for less pay. A place open to global trade and one that is increasingly educated and highly skilled, and working hard to get even more so. The reality is Canada isn't competing on any of those fronts. And that's a grim reality for the people living through the consequences. You know, when you go from from uh, a nice paycheck that paid your bills and allow you to go out for dinner on a Friday night to, um, well, like I said, basically living off of unemployment for a year. And that then your savings went from here to here. And then anything that you might have in, in your pensions or whatever, you start pulling out of that and you find ways to try and make it through. And then now you're starting at a job that's like, you know, close to minimum wage and trying to work your way back up again. And it's probably cruel to the companies that take advantage of people that are, are down there and, and only give them peanuts to what, what they should be making so they can get a better and higher profit margin. So if you could talk to one of these guys, one of these Mexican workers doing these jobs, what would you say? What do you say? You say, you know what, fight fight for your rights like they're taking advantage of you like yes we were in a union and the union did that but they need to get together and say hey why are you doing this to us what what's different from us to them because there is no difference indeed probably not much difference the workday is done and after a long bus ride san martin walks the final blocks home his street at the base of a mountain in Guadalupe. It's a house he owns with his wife, Adriana, and they have two boys, Adrian and Chris. Together, they have the same worries as most parents, hoping for a better future for their kids. Do you know that the same person doing your exact same job in Canada makes something like $20 an hour? And does it seem fair or unfair? Well, it's que. Well, I say it's unfair because I ask myself, how come if the people there make the same work we do here, how can they get more pay than me? I give my all to the plant and always try to make my work perfect. I asked San Martin what he thinks he should make, and the answer surprised me. Expecting him to say double or triple his current salary, it's a more simple calculus. The truth is I don't exactly know what the Canadians get paid there. If they asked me, I would ask to be paid the same amount as the Canadians. Even the companies benefiting from lower Mexican wages know they will keep rising. But the expectation is that a culture of high productivity and innovation, combined with the appeal of easy trade, will keep this place attractive. All of it kind of a wake-up call to Canada and what it needs to do to attract jobs down the road to stop what feels like an inevitable decline. But don't ask businesses in Nueva León to do the work for us. They are very much focused on Mexico. And it seems some things still get lost in translation, like the flags flying outside this Canadian factory we spotted in Ramos, a sadly fitting symbol of Canada's status here. Amanda Lang, CBC News, Ramos, Mexico.